Welcome back to Sunday League Football. If you checked out yesterday's Sunday League Extra, you would know what the hell is going on right now. But if you don't, let me bring you up to speed. This is the FA People's Cup. The FA got in touch with us as they wanted us to make a video on our progress during the competition. It's a competition that's for everybody, even Tomo with his beer. Its main aim is to simply inspire people to get into playing football. And you know what? That struck a call with us because we get tons of messages every single week from you guys thanking us for inspiring you to get into the beautiful game. We never set out to do that, but if it's working, that's great. And obviously this competition is designed to do exactly the same thing. So we've entered two five-a-side teams into this one. Let's check out those teams now. Welcome to Palmer's FC A, which was let down very last minute by our goalkeeper Jack. So in between the sticks for this one, we've got Tomo. Nice one, mate. We've also got the return of Jamie, our captain. Shane's there alongside him. We've got Super Dan, Nolsey, and our newest signing, Elliot. Over to the B team, and it looks like this, and we do have a goalkeeper going by the name of Frank. We've also got Tony, Scottish, Kev, Luke, Kieran, and Connor all joining him. Right, I'm just going to put this out there now. This competition didn't go as planned. Despite being invited down and told that they'd accommodate us by staggering the fixtures so we could get the footage from both teams. Unfortunately, this didn't happen, and a lot of the time, the teams were clashing. We were also told that the competition ran from 2pm to 4pm, and unfortunately that wasn't the case either, which meant, well, I'll show you in a bit. However, I did film as much as I possibly could for you guys, and as you can see here, it's Palmer's FCB up first, lining up against a team called the Hogs, and here's the ref in a clashing orange kit. Let's hope he takes that one off. And when he does, let's hope he's got something underneath. So here we go, first game, and it's Kev to kick us off. Ah, uh, this takes me back. Reminds me of the Six Aside Sessions days. It's something that we're going to definitely look to bring back. We're just currently looking for a venue to do it in. Just a quick breakdown. It is a five-a-side competition. Two subs. Roll on, roll off. And I'm just showing this clip here because you can see Tony passing it back to Frank there. And then he throws it out to Kieran. Now, there was a lot of talk about the different rules in here, including the pass backs. Some people were saying you couldn't pass back. Some people were saying you could. It was all a little bit confusing, but seeing as you can pass back there, I guess it's all right. Now, we've got Kev over here making a nuisance of himself, trying to get beyond the two blue players. He passes it back to Tony into the path of Kieran. Defender comes in and the ref blows up there for a free kick. And here is that free kick. Kev lays it off to Kieran, hits it first time, past the keeper into the back of the net and that's 1-0 to Palmer's FC. B. Kick off. If you used to watch six exercise sessions, you would know that I had to describe players by what they were wearing or what they looked like because they didn't necessarily have numbers. Just like White Boots here, he puts it forward for Odd Top. That's right, Odd Top. You're letting your team down. It's a slightly different shade of blue. His White Shorts putting Tony under pressure as he passes it back to Frank and hang on. What? The ref's blowing up for a pass back? There's a little bit of confusion. It's a free kick and then suddenly it's a penalty. Where'd that come from? Oh well, we've got to get on with it as Black Shorts takes it, but Frank makes the save there, and off we go. Here we've got Connor on that far side, switching over to this near side where Kieran is. Nice little flick back here, but he's pushed over by Black Shorts. Here's Kieran now putting it across the box for Connor, who sticks it past the keeper, and this guy in the background is very pleased. Thanks for anyone that did come down and support us on the day. 2 0 Palmer's FCB. Kick off. Control from White Boots and shot from distance, which Frank is equal to. Here comes Tony on that far side now, looking odd as always in a Tottenham bobble hat. And of course, Larry Schultz. He gives it to Connor though, who hits it, but he's hit the post. And the rebound comes out to Black Schultz, who's on his way now. Looks to get beyond Kev, but he's tripped. Takes out Kieran in the process, but that is a free kick to our opponents. White Boots takes that one as he gives it to Odd Top. He shoots, but that's an easy one for Frank. Here comes White Boots now for our opponents, but Kev wins it back straight away on this near side. He's not touched it yet. Couple of step overs. Eventually, switches it over to that far side where Tony is. And now we've got a little bit of space to work with. He looks to get beyond Odd Top. He catches Tony there, goes over himself. It's a free kick to us. And Tony decides to take that one quick for Connor, who tries to be clever with the back heel, but he puts that overhead height, and that's a free kick to our opponents. We're in possession again now with Kieran. It's a nice little bit of skill from him to give to Connor. He gets it straight back, goes past White Schultz. He's in on goal, but he drags that one wide. Gets a second chance here, but that's blocked by White Schultz and cleared by Odd Top. It's Tony's turn to get forward now as he looks to get beyond Odd Top. Just about hangs onto it, but loses out to White Schultz as he gives it to White Boots. He hits it, but drags that one wide. Once again, it's Kieran in possession now as he gets beyond Black Schultz, then gets beyond Odd Top, in on goal. It's a slight nudge in the back from White Schultz there, and that is brought back for a free kick. A couple of substitutions, it's Kev for Luke and Tony for Scottish, and then we take that free kick with a back heel from Connor into Luke, who puts it across to Scottish here. Scottish then plays it into Connor, who gives it back to Scottish. He then sticks it across the box for Luke. Two substitutions combined in there as the keeper helps it into the back of the net, but as you can see from the replay here, it was actually inside the box when Luke struck it, so a good call from the referee. Over that far side now, and Connor continues to cause problems for our opponents. He loves these small-sided games as he puts it into the box. It comes off the keeper there, out to White Schultz, who gives it to Black Schultz. Kieran comes in there, and that falls to Scottish with his right, past the keeper, and that, my friends, is pretty much game over. So we have a kickoff, and an opportunity for our opponents as Red Boots, who's just coming on the field, gives it to White Boots. He strikes it, and that finds itself over the far side to Black Schultz. He gives it to White Schultz. Frank makes the save, and it comes out to Kieran. Great bit of skill from him there to get past Red Boots. Slides in there, and that's brought back for a free kick to our opponents. Unfortunately, you can't slide in these games. Time for some simple football. Scottish to Connor. Connor over here to Kev. Kev gives it back inside to Connor, who then finds Luke in space on this near side. He gets it on his right, fires it past the keeper, and that, my friends, is 4-0 to Palmer's FC. B. And with a kickoff, that's full time. 
And here we are running to Palmer's FC A's first game. We're currently running from pitch five down to pitch one. It would have been bliss if we was on the pitch next to each other, but hey, can't have it all. And here we are, pitch one, Wembley. Bit of a struggle to film on this one. As you can see, we've got to go through this metal fence. But unfortunately, their opponents didn't show. So it was an automatic 5-0 win. In fact, every team in the group just got a 5-0 win. Apparently, they were here. They signed up. It looks like they've gone home. So no game for the A team to start with. All right, let's do the walk back to pitch five then. What's happening, B team? How's it going? Their next game is against Twez FC. Let's see how this one pans out. So straight from kickoff, Kieran goes beyond Black Schultz here, gets beyond trousers as he puts it across for Scottish. Oh my god. Oh dear, oh dear. Could have easily been one at early doors. His red boots at the back now playing it up to Black Schultz. And it's a nice flick past Kev here. Gets there before it rolls into the area as well as he puts it across the box, but that is cleared by Tony. Trousers now playing it across in the middle to Red Boots. He picks it up and shoots from distance. And that's just past Frank's post. Picked up by Black Schultz here as he looks to get beyond Scottish. But in fact, Scottish does in for strength. That's the first time I've ever said that. Ball can't go back to Frank, so Tony has to wait for it to come out and he does well to get beyond Blue Sox there. Makes his way forward, shoots from distance, but that is blocked by Black Shorts. He's Blue Sox for our opponents now playing it forward to Trousers over that far side. Scottish does well to win it back and back heels it down the line to Kev. He's got Kieran in the middle, which he uses. It comes off of Red Boots there. Hits it off the ball, falls to Kieran on the edge of the box. He's got a couple of defenders on him, opts to use Scottish on the overlap. He hits it, comes off of Black Shorts, and that goes overhead height. Free kick. And here is that free kick as Scottish literally just passes it to Blue Sox, and now our opponents are on their way with trousers. He does well to get past Kieran on this near side, hits it with the left, but that's straight into the arms of Frank. Here's Kev now looking to play it out from the back, but instead goes beyond a couple of players here. Ref's in the way, but he does get the ball to Scottish. He plays it out to Kieran on this near side, and then he gives it back to Kev, who's got Scottish on that far side, but instead what's for Kieran again, and then he puts puts it across to Scottish. Not the best of balls, he will admit, as Scottish finds himself in the corner. Got Blue Sox to deal with, but gets past him. Gets the shot in there, but that wasn't going to trouble the keeper. Time for a double change, and it's Scottish and Kev coming off for Luke and Connor. And here is Connor making an impact straight away as he skips beyond Red Boots here on that far side. Gets the shot in. Maybe he could have gone a little bit closer, but it was a good save by the keeper in the end. His trousers on the near side now getting a shot in. Parried away by Frank, and that is out to Tony as he makes his way forward now. Black Schultz is on him as he looks to cut back. Looks like he needs a little bit of help, and he gets that in Luke here. He then gives it back to Tony, who gets the shot in with a right, but it's a good save from the keeper. And that looks to be Tony's day done as he makes his way off of the field here. We look to come away with the ball as Luke puts it clear, but that is played into Trousers, who's completely free here. Don't see the goal, but he's fired past Frank. And I cannot believe we're making a substitution halfway through our opponents attacking. Not good as we kick off. It's Kieran now giving it to Connor out here. He then gives it straight back to Kieran as he makes his way forward. That ends up off the chest of Blue Sox. Back to the keeper. He can't pick it up or touch it. Is that a penalty? No, it's brought back for a free kick from the earlier challenge from Orange Sox. Kieran hits that one. That's off of trousers. Out to Connor here as he gets beyond Blue Sox on the far side. Hits it with the left, but that is past the post. Blue Sox now from distance shooting. That's just past Frank Post. Rebounds out to trousers. He gets the shot in. Comes off of Frank. <laughs> And so the B-side have narrowly lost their second game, just 1-0. And I've just looked down to find that the fixture clashes have begun. The A-team have already started their game. As you can see from the scoreboard at the top, we've missed two goals. But even worse than that, we missed a whole entire game. Whilst the previous game for the B-team was going on, the A-team were already playing and they rode out 3-0 winners. So that is two wins out of two for them. And there's been no rest for them either. The team that didn't turn up was the next fixture. That was abandoned. And now Palmer's FCA are back on the field, winning 2-0 against a side called Young Bulls. And that 2-0 scoreline up there is about to change as Shane gives the ball to Knowles. It's a little bit behind him. Loses out there, but Shane takes over, pokes it past the keeper, and that, my friends, is now 3 0 to Palmer's FC 8. We've got Greytop at the back giving it to Hatboy, and it's a misplaced pass from him into Nolsey as he gets past Sleeves, goes beyond Greytop, hits the shot, and the keeper's there to make a save with his feet. That ball comes out to Hatboy, who quickly loses out to Nolsey on the far side. Hatboy then kicks Nolsey for no apparent reason. They square up to each other, Nolsey gives him a shove, and Hatboy walks off. I think he's just angry that he wasn't given a shirt by his team. We've got our opponents keeping now, throwing it out to Hatboy on this near side, but he quickly loses out to Shane here. Him and Red Sox combine to take Shane out, and that is a free kick. And once again, look at this. Hatboy squaring up to Shane this time. He really has got a problem with us. Just give him an Arsenal shirt. I'm sure he'll be happy. Also, I don't know how we meant to take a free kick when he's standing that close. Rest not doing us any favours and telling us to carry on. But Shane gives it to Nolsey, but that goes straight through to Sleeves here as they break. But that's well over the bar from that shot. Is anyone else getting annoyed by the metal fence as Shane gets between two opponents there? He plays it over to that far side to Jamie. He hits it first time, but that's a save from the keeper with his feet. But he does step outside the box there. Ref didn't notice that, of course. And the game carries on as normal. Here's the keeper once again throwing it out this time to Hatboy. He loses out to Jamie. He makes his way forward beyond Grey Top there. Hits it with the right. It hits the post. Comes out to Elliot. But his shot rebounds off of Grey Top there and safely through to the keeper. He rolls it out. Intercepted by Jamie. Picked up by Sleeves who hits it. And that is straight under Tomo there. They've got a goal back, and it's currently 3-1. Here's a pass back over that far side from Dan. 
back to Tomo, just to prove that they're playing slightly different rules on this pitch. His sleeves at the back now, what I can only assume was a shot, but it's ended up with White Top, who's just got on the field, shoots, but Tomo's there with a great save. He's Nolsey now, under pressure from sleeves, gets beyond Hat Boy as well, gets beyond sleeves again, passes it into the path of Elliot, pokes it past the keeper, and now my friends is 4-1 to Palmer's FCA. <laughs> So having had a look at the fixtures, you'd assume the B team would be up next, but no, they've got to wait for three matches. So the A team are going to be on once again. Let's check out how they get on against a team called the Lions. Appropriate colour as well as they kick off. Well, don't really kick off, it's just a shot from the halfway line, which is blocked. Elliot chasing the ball down over there, and I've noticed that this team are wearing very similar stuff, so it's going to be very hard to uh, describe what they're wearing. But Shane comes in there with a shot, and that flashes wide. Here's the ball now cleared down the line, off the sideboard, into the path of Red Boots here. Quite tricky, and that's a fantastic pass in between them, and Yellow Boots sticks it past Tomo there, and that is 1-0 to our opponents out of nowhere. Can we get an instant reply? Probably, because I've already mentioned it. Jamie flashes a shot wide there. Rebound out to Elio, hits it, comes off the keeper and rolls over the line into the back of the net, and that is suddenly 1-0. Quite a few comments about Elliot in previous weeks, saying he's not as good as we've hyped him up to be. He's only just coming back from a long stint out of football, but you can see he's having a great time here. Skipping past Red Boots, shoots from distance, but the keeper's equal to that. Here's Shane now receiving the ball from Tomo as he plays it across to Elliot. He then plays it out to Nolsey on this near side, who shoots. It comes off the keeper. Elliot looking for the rebound there but he's caught and he looks to be in a little bit of pain there struggling to put any weight on that ankle and that is his game over worrying stuff yes for this tournament but more so our Sunday league campaign let's hope he gets over that one so Elliot is replaced by Dan as Jamie gets tripped from behind there but play carries on as Shane gives it back to Jamie little drag over and a poke past the keeper and that makes it 2-1 to Palmer's FC8 more chances now as Nolsey gets involved going past Odd Sox there hits it from distance but that is wide of the goal so with four wins from four, the A team have certainly confirmed quarter-final progress. Well done to them. And now it's over to the B team, who are just waiting for this game to finish. Ref just confirming which teams are on next. But unfortunately, our opponents have gone home. Name and shame. Road to Wembley. The lads have been waiting half hour for this game. Now they've got to wait another half hour. The time is now five past five. The tournament was meant to run between two and four, but it's running very, very late. These lads can't commit any longer. And with two league games, a potential quarter, semi and final on the cards, it's just going to go on all night. So it's with regret that the B team have to drop out. Sad, sad time. Back to the A team and the only team left out there facing a team called Lash Bandits. This team currently sits second behind us, but they did win their previous game 10-1, so they've certainly got something about them. Forgot this, a slightly better view by standing on the bench at the back, and Elliot, who tried to start the game, is coming off straight away. You'll see it's Connor from the B team coming on. We probably just broke some rule by doing that, but you know what? The rules keep changing in this tournament, and I don't think anyone will notice other than the 100,000 people that may or may not watch this. You know what? There was actually a need for Connor to come on because with Elliot injured, Knowles has gone home as well. That would have only left us with four players. Players. So it's another team dressed the same without numbers, so it's going to be hard to describe them as a shot comes in. That cannon's off of Shane there, and that's overhead height, and it's a free kick, which, as you can see, is laid back, hit first time, and straight past Tomo. No chance for him there, and that is 1 0 to our opponents. As we look to play it out from the back, he's cut out straight away, and it falls to the goal scorer. A decent left foot on him, but Tomo's there to make the save. Here they come forward again now with that goal scorer. He pokes it this time rather than putting some power behind it. Tomo makes the save there, and it falls out to them. Dan's trying to get the ball back, but they manage to hang on to it. He then falls over. Over. Play carries on with a goal scorer. Puts it through to this guy here. He shoots and that's straight past Tomo. 2 0 now. Well, I had a name for one of them. It was goal scorer. Now there's two different goal scorers. But we move on as Connor loses out here. They've been putting the pressure on from the start. Shot comes in off the back ball. Falls to the other goal scorer. That's it. We'll call him other goal scorer. In fact, he's just got his second. We'll call him Brace. The A team have fallen apart in this game. Like I say, both teams are going to qualify, but it looks like Palmers are going to be second. Is Connor now taking matters into his own hands as he gets past goal scorer? Gets past Brace there. Looks to go beyond this guy here. Gets the shot in, but the keeper's there to to make the save. Here's Tomo now playing the ball out to Connor, who puts it across to Jamie. He loses out on the edge here. Tomo makes the first save and the second save. Double save from him. Well done, that man. And Connor looks to bring it away now. Gets beyond the first man here. They're completely surrounded him, but he's got through. Hits it past the keeper. It's hit the post, but unlucky. We don't get anything out of that, but well done to Tomo down the other end. We're trying to play some football, but they're reading us like a book as this guy cuts this one out. Shoots, doesn't go to plan. Comes off of Connor there. And you know what? It wasn't even a pass back. It was his control that let him down, which fell back to Tomo. And the ref's given a penalty. So, so far in this tournament, and especially on this pitch, we've seen pass backs allowed. Then we've seen pass backs given as free kicks. And now we're seeing pass backs given as penalties as the goal scorer steps up. But Tomo's there to make the save and keeps the score at 3 0. And this right here is the final chance of the game as Shane picks it up from Dan's pass here. Shoots, but the keeper's equal to it. <laughs> And that's that. The A team qualify in second, go through to the quarters, but more time constraints. 45 minute wait till the quarterfinals. Now, a few of the lads have got to go home. 
injuries all round, this just isn't going to happen. So that, my friends, was that. We were asked by the FA to come down and film our experience of the FA People's Cup. Overall, a brilliant idea, and hopefully next year, the times will run a little bit better, and we may see you in a tournament as well. But until then, we'll be back next week with another league game, and hopefully another three points as we look to maintain top spot. See you in the next one.